Check this out. I type in coding with Roby password, press login, and boom, we're in. Hey friends, in this video, we will create a simple React application along with a simple Fast API application. We will create authentication using JWTs on the Fast API side, along with having a user SQL database. And on the React side, we'll create a simple login page that when a user is authenticated, it redirects the user to a new protected component. All right, so we are going to set up authentication for Fast API and a React front-end application. Now, how I start this already is I already have a virtual ENV, which is a virtual environment, and I have this requirements.txt for our fast API. So I'm going to start by just saying pip install dash r requirements.txt. All right, so this installs all the dependencies that we need for fast API. Now, the very first thing we can do is go in here and let's go ahead and create a database.py file. And then inside our database.py file, we want to say from SQL Alchemy, we want to be able to create our engine. We want to be able to create a declarative base and then our session maker. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using SQLite because it's just so fast and so easy and so awesome to use for these kind of tutorials. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a new file called models.py where we can say what our models or database tables are going to be inside our database. So we're going to create a new class of user which has an ID, a username, and a hashed password. Now, something about authentication is inside our database, we never want to save the password as plain text. We only want to be able to save the password as a hashed password, which means we're using some kind of like bcrypt algorithm to be able to hash the password. And then when a user tries to log in, we'll hash that password and see if they equal the exact same. You can't unhash a password once you hash it. You can only hash it and you can verify if they're the same unique characters. All right, now let's go back into our backend and let's create a main.py file. And now, as you know, I start pretty much every tutorial by just going through our fast API application where we're going to have a bunch of dependencies for Pydantic, password hashing and encrypting. JWTs, because we're going to be using JWTs for this, and then our database in FastAPI with SQL Alchemy. Now, to get this started, we need to create an OAuth2 scheme, which equals our OAuth2 password bear with our token URL of token. This is where we're going to be able to identify where the JWT is in our code. We now have to do a little bit of course control, which means we can't have outside applications hitting our fast API application without us saying, hey, this application is allowed to call our endpoints. It's a way to just protect us from outside users. Now, I inside here have our origin equal to our localhost port 3000. That's going to be the main development URL for our React application. I added this in here just in case you want to use it in the future. This could be your production server. So if you deployed your React application, you would want to add that URL here. We're then adding a middleware inside our fast API application, which takes in our cores middleware. And then we are allowing certain things. So really here, we're allowing all types of requests, but we have to say, hey, if it's from this origin, we are allowing all types of requests. If it's not from this origin, we're going to deny it completely and throw a cores error. And again, the core's error is to protect us from outside users. Next, we want to be able to create our database dependency for our yield. And then we want to create our password context, which is going to be schemes bcrypt with deprecated auto. This is a way for us to be able to hash our passwords in the future. We need to create a secret key for our JWT. For this tutorial, I'm just going to use your secret key, but you'll want to make this secret in potentially using something that's like creating characters automatically. We're going to be using the HS256 algorithm and it expires in 30 minutes. Now, the very first thing we're going to be doing is making it so we can create users in our application. So we're going to create a new class of user create, which takes in a base model with a username and password. And then let's allow the user to be able to create a new user based on this create user call. And what we're doing here is we are saying when this create user gets called, we're going to create a DB session. We're going to create a user create. And then, then we're going to have our hashed password, which uses that password context up here where we're hashing our user password and then saving that user to our database and then returning complete. Now, to be able to call this, we need a API endpoint with a post slash register where we're creating a user dependency and a user create where a DB user is get user by username. If that user is null, 
Well, then we're going to create the user. If the user does exist, we're going to throw a HTTP exception saying that user is already registered. Now we want to authenticate the user by throwing a user query to check if that user is verified or not. And then if not, password contacts verify that user. Create the access token based on dictionary. We want to create a new post for our token and then a verify token and then our get verify token where we're using to verify the user. Now, if you want to go in more detail with this, I have another video on fast API JWTs. I'll post that video right here. But for the time being, I'm going to take it that you kind of know what's going on with JWTs in fast API. All right. So now that we have our back end all configured, let's go into our front end and I'm going to create a new terminal. So this first terminal is going to be for our back end, and then I'm going to create a new one for our front end. So we can just say CD into our front end. Now, the very first thing we need to do here is create our react application. Now, this tutorial is assuming you have like Node.js 18 or higher. I think that's what I have installed on my machine right now. So you need to be able to run an MPX create React app. This last auth app is the name of the React application I'm creating. Now, once you type that in, this will install all the dependencies that we need for our React application. I'm going to close these fast API files so it doesn't get confusing. We are no longer in our backend directory. We are in our front end directory. Now, once you are inside your front end directory, we need to CD into our auth app. And then here we can do an NPM install React Router DOM. This will install all the dependencies that we need to be able to use routes and links inside React. Now, the very first thing we want to do is go into source and let's create a new component called login.js. Inside here, we want to add quite a bit of stuff. We want to add a React use React inside our React, and then we want to use Navigate from our React router DOM. We want to create a function of login, which holds a bunch of pieces of state. So username, password, error, and loading. We want to instantiate our use Navigate from React router. We want to be able to validate our form by passing in a username and password for our username and password are required fields. We want to be able to handle our submit. So once a user tries to log in, we want to be able to handle those submissions. We have our form details with URL search params where we pass in our form details of username and password. We want to then try and call our await fetch for our token where we can pass in post and our content type is going to be application slash XWWW dash form URL encoded with our form details, which is going to be our username and password. If we get a successful response, we're going to be taken to a protected component that makes sure you have a token valid. But before we do that, we set our local storage, which is a way for us to be able to save information on our browser. We set our local storage to whatever the token is that we get back once we try to log in as a user. If there's any issues, we'll throw an authentication failed and then we'll catch the error. And then right here, we just have a form that is a login password. And then if there's an error, we'll print the error in red. Let's now create a new component called protected.js. And inside here, we have our React use effect with our React and our React router. Now, what's different about this page is the very first thing we do here is we verify our token. So we check to see what our token is inside our local storage.get item token. I'm printing our token right now. You can delete that if you would like. And then we have our const response equals await fetch, which is our token path to verify our token. If it fails, we navigate back to the normal slash, which we're going to set up as our login page. And if it all works, we are going to say this is a protected path only visible to authenticated users. Now let's go inside our app.js and let's swap this all out with our browser router as router routes and route from our React router DOM, where we have a login page component and our protected page component. Now let's see what happens. Let's start by turning on our database and we can do this by doing a uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. And then inside here, we can go to our NPM start. This will start our React application. Now, before we do that, let's go into our fast API docs and let's register a user really quick. I'm going to register coding with Roby. 
and the password is going to be ABC123. And if we execute this, we can see that we got a successful 200 complete response from our Fast API application. Now, if we go into our React app, we can try and log in. So I'm going to say test, test. If we try and log in with this user, we're going to get an incorrect username or password. And now if we go ahead and type in coding with Roby with the password ABC123 and we click log in, we can see that it's going to tell us this is a protected page only visible to authenticated users. Now, how is this working? Well, if we go and right click and we go into inspect into our dev console and we go all the way over to application, we can see inside our local storage, we are saving a token and this token is a valid JWT that was given to us from our fast API application. Now, there's a couple ways for this to fail. If this token is wrong or it is expired, we can go inside our protected JS and see that if there is an error, we remove it completely. So let's go ahead and say we wanted to modify this. And then we wanted to refresh we can see that it deletes the token because the verification failed and it brought us back into our username and password. If we try to go back to our protected path, it's going to reroute us back to the login. If we go back into coding with Roby and we type in ABC123 and we log in, another thing that we can do is go ahead and just right click on this token, delete it, and if we refresh, it's going to bring us back. So this is how you can implement React authentication using Fast API. Pretty simple using JWTs. If you want this code, I'm going to leave it in the bio below. And I hope you enjoyed this video.